H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. So in this particular video, we are going to see the practical example on the throw clause. And the throw clause is basically used to create our own exceptions. So in this particular example, we see that how can we actually handle the exception coming out from the throw clause by using the throw clause, using the try catch block and the throws clause. We are also going to see the repercussions or the effects that we have when we use the try catch block to handle the throw clause and when we use the throws clause to handle the throw clause. So let us go forward. So let us first see handling the throw clause using the try catch block. I have Eclipse open in front of me. I will create a new project and the project will be called as session number 33. Click on next and click on finish. Say no to the perspective change. In this particular source file, I'm going to create a package called as the throw package or the throw clause package. And in this particular package, I'm going to first create a class file. Let's say throw Underwilt, let's say try catch block. Call of the main method. So let us see how we can create first of all our own exception. So we just have to use the throw keyword. It is in red color. That means it's a reserved keyword. And then we have to write down new exception. And inside the parenthesis of the exception we can pass on the message of the exception out here. This is the exception, this is nothing but the exception class. Okay, and the exception class, um, <clears throat> can have a parenthesis where you can define the message of the exception out here. This is how we use and create our own exception using the throw clause and the keyword is throw. And I can write down, this is my first exception using the throw clause and if you see out here there is a red underline and there is a syntax error it says that you have to first uh, It says that it has an unhandled exceptions type exception and the unhandled exception is named as exception only. Okay. So the th exception that you've created using the throw clause has created an exception by itself and the exception name is exception only. That means the class called exception. Okay. Now what we can do is that if you hover your mouse over the red line, you will see there are two ways to handle the throw clause. First way is using the try catch block and the second way is by using the throws clause. So we will first see th then we when we use a try catch block, so you just hover your mouse over the red line and click on surround with try catch block. This handles the exception out here. Okay, and then inside the try catch block, I can remove this part, print dot stack trace, and I can also use uh, CISO. To get the message of the exception e dot get message and if you see if I run this particular throw clause with handle with the try catch block what is going to happen the compiler is going to find out that there is an exception out here which is handle and the compiler moves the control to the catch block rem uh, executes the body part of the catch block so i can save this class file and run it we see that we are getting the print stack trace 
and if you see the print structures for the throw clause it says it is a exception by itself so the throw clause throw clause shows you throws throws the exception called exception only and if you see this is the message of the exception uh, okay this message was given out in this argument using the throw clause and that is what we see out here and uh, the exception is present in line number nine okay this is the line okay so this is coming out that means this is the whole thing that you see out here is coming out because of the print stack trace method use similarly we have used the get message method and this is what the message of the exception that we have written inside the argument of the exception out here this has been written twice the first word remove it and save it so this is how we handle exceptions that is the throw clause using the try catch block now if i initiate a process of let's say integer a is equal to 20 and i print out the result of it as sys out a okay and i run the I run the uh, throw clause using the try catch block. So I'm going to get the result as this. So this uh, 20 is coming because of the println command in line number 8. And this part is coming, that is, this total part is coming because of the uh, print stack trace method used inside the body of the catch block. And this will throw out this particular part. Fine. So let's now uh, also have an integer b out here whose value is let's say it's 40 and I want to print out the value of b. So let's say 40. And if I save the class file and run it, I get the result as 40 out here. You can see that's 20 and 40. And uh, you know there is a lot of jumble up of the answers in the console. So what I can do is I can just after this I can create certain blank lines using the print end command. Two blank lines rather. And then I can run the class file again and run it. So I see this this 20 is coming for line number 8. This is coming for this whole thing is coming for the print track trace message a method used inside the catch block body and this is coming out for the get message method used and this 40 is coming for the print and use in line number 19 this is how your throw clause reacts with the try catch block and we are able to see the results of the codes which are written down after the line which has exception so this line has the exception and I'm getting the results of this particular lines by using or handling the throw clause using the try catch block. So that's uh, one part. The next part is we're going to see how do we handle throw clause with the throws clause and what are the repercussions of using the throws clause to handle the throw clause. Go back to your Eclipse and I'll create a new class file by the name of let's say throw underscore throws clause so handling the throw clause by the throws clause call of the main method and uh, i'm going to remove this and let's say i want to create my own exception so throw new exception and uh, I get the message of the exception within the parenthesis of the exception out here. So I can just write down that this is the first throw exception. Now, as we have know that uh, we can actually handle the throw clause using the throws clause also so if you hover your mouse you'll see that it's an unhandled exception which needs to be handled before you execute this class file and the type of exception is exception only so how can we handle it 
with the throw clause. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is we can just write down out here throws and the exception name is exception only so this will remove the red underline out and this will remove the unhandled exception also using the throws clause now let's see that if i have an integer a which is equal to 20 and i do assist out of the variable a and i run the class file I get the value of 20 and then if you see out here <coughs> the exception is coming as the exception name is exception and this is the message of the exception this is the first throw exception at line number 9 if I click out here it will give me the line which has the exception now if I try to initialize a variable b with 40 and do a printout try to do a printout let's say b out here you will see that this line is throwing out a red underline and if you hover your mouse it says that unreachable code the unreachable code is coming because of the fact that when we try to actually handle the throw clause using the throws clause the exception is not handled the red underline goes but the exception is not handled if the exception would have been handled then i would have not got this particular red underline in this line number 10 stating that it's an unreachable code that means it is showing that it's an unreachable code if i try to run it right now the class file will tell me that you want to proceed further with the errors just proceed further and we'll see that there is an exception in thread main unresolved compilation problem unreachable code at line number 10 okay if I click on that it will show you line number 10 and this is a typical uh, replication of handling a throw clause using the throws clause so you will see that if I remove the throws clause throws exception if I remove it the red underline comes out here in the line in which the throw clause is used so let's say I try to handle using the throw clause. So I will put it back. The red underline goes from here. So it is put at the wrong place. This has to be put. The throw clause is always part of the method line. So the red underline grows out here. But if we see out, if we comment these two lines of code and execute the class file, I'll still get the exception out here. This result of 20 is coming for integer a after that whatever you see is part of your exception coming in in line number 10 you are getting the message of the exception that was written in the exception argument but if you click on this it will still show you that this line has the problem and that is why if I try to write down any code after the throw clause handled by the throws ex throws clause it will show you a unreachable code so that means in order to inference is that that means in order to handle a throw clause we definitely should use the try catch method rather than using the throws clause so that's about it if you have any questions please revert to us thanks for